Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Iris Ball and today I would like to talk to you about the oculomotor nerve. The oculomotor nerve is the third of 12 cranial nerves and it has both motor and parasympathetic functions. But before we get into the functions of the oculomotor nerve, let me first explain a bit more about the anatomy. So cranial nerve 3 originates in the midbrain at the superior colliculus. It then exits through the superior orbital fissure of the skull and enters the orbital cavity. So as you can see here, the oculomotor nerve comes down and it separates into a superior and inferior branch where it innervates most of the oculomotor muscles of the eye. So now that we understand the anatomy of the oculomotor nerve, let's talk a little bit more about its functions. So, as I previously mentioned, there is a superior and inferior branch. The superior branch is responsible for innervating the levator palpebrae superioris, which raises the upper eyelid. So, Mark, if you could please raise your eyelids for me. You got it. There we go. Very nice. <laughs> Good morning. It also innervates the superior rectus muscle, which elevates the eye. So, Mark, if you could please look up towards the sky. Wonderful. The inferior branch of cranial nerve 3 innervates the inferior rectus muscle, which depresses the eye. Mark, could you please look towards your toes? Nice. The medial rectus muscle, which adducts the eye. Mark, could you look at your nose for me? <laughs> and the inferior oblique muscle, which elevates, abducts, and laterally rotates the eye. So Mark, if you could look up and then away from your nose, and then just kind of rest down. Very nice. All right. So as I previously mentioned, the ocular motor nerve also has some parasympathetic functions. So the ocular motor nerve innervates the sphincter pupillae of the eye, which is located at the posterior portion of the iris and consists of smooth muscle tissue. This constricts the pupil and reduces the amount of light that enters the eye. It also innervates the ciliary muscles, which contract and allow the eyes to better adapt to short-range vision. So now that we understand the functions of cranial nerve 3, we are certainly better equipped to identify if someone presents with a lesion in the ocular motor nerve. So let's talk about a few ways that we can test for lesions of the ocular motor nerve. First method, you are going to ask your patient to hold perfectly still. So Mark, if you could please just stand still. And you are going to take your finger and you're going to hold your finger approximately 40 centimeters away. And you are then going to have your patient follow your finger as you move up, down, side, to side. Here, we're looking out for signs of ptosis or drooping of the upper eyelid. And you can also inquire your patient about diplopia. So, Mark, as you're following my finger up and down and side to side, are you having any signs of double vision? No. Okay, very good. So, next, you're going to hold your finger to each side for a few seconds. There we go. Just follow me. Very good. And we're checking for signs of nystagmus or repetitive uncontrolled movements. So, this one, yo, oh yeah, there we go. Very good. Okay. So, you need to be careful that you're not receiving a false positive. This can happen if you're holding your finger too close to their eye or too far out of their vision. There we go. So... Another method to use for testing the ocular motor nerve is if you have a patient who presents with two different sized pupils. So here in this case, our right eye is larger than the pupil of our left eye. So how can we test which one is the abnormal eye? I'm going to first darken the room. Now I'm going to brighten the room again. Oh my goodness, look at that. So, this it, the difference has increased, so the abnormality is in the right eye and is due to failure of parasympathetic tone in the larger pupil. 
Additional deficits that a person in who has a lesion of the ocular motor nerve could present with would be their eye resting in a down and out position. Uh, this is because the eye cannot elevate, depress, or adduct. So Mark, if you could just kind of look away from your nose. Yeah, just like that. Hmm. <laughs> Causes of lesions of the ocular motor nerve are due to diseases such as diabetes, which causes neuropathy, or multiple sclerosis, which attacks the central nervous system, thus the cranial nerves, or anatomical causes such as intracranial pressure compressing the nerve, or an aneurysm. So unfortunately, that's all the time that we have today to talk to you about the ocular motor nerve. But I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope that it was informative and beneficial. See you next time.